Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode where we will dive into the amazing world of oceans and continents. Jules Verne, a famous writer, beautifully described the ocean as something so important and magical. He said, the ocean covers most of the earth about 7 tenths or 70% of the planet. Its air is fresh and clean, making it healthy for life. The ocean is like a giant empty desert, but it's never lonely because life is everywhere. In it, fish, whales, plants and so much more. It's a treasure of nature, holding water, life and mysteries. The earth began with the ocean and who knows, maybe it will end with it too. This means the ocean is not just water, it's the heart of our planet, shaping life and nature. The big questions about oceans and continents. What are oceans and continents? What are their names and their distribution? We live on land which is made up of seven big pieces called continents. But the real superstar is the ocean. It's like the heart of our planet. The ocean is not just water. It's alive. There are colorful fish, whales and even tiny creatures we can't see. It's also where we get oxygen to breathe. Yes, the ocean helps make the air we breathe is not that amazing. Now let's talk about the land where we live continents. There are seven continents on earth. Can you name them? Let's say them together. Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. Every continent is unique with different people, animal and even climates. Some continents are warm and sunny while others like Antarctica are covered in ice. Did you know no one lives there permanently? Only scientists visit to study. The oceans connect all these continents. There are five oceans and they are huge. Let's name them too. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Southern Ocean and Arctic Ocean. These oceans are like highways for ships helping people travel and trade across the world. So the next time you look at a globe, remember most of it is water and that water is what makes Earth so special. The oceans and continents are like best friends, working together to keep our planet alive and beautiful. Let's continue our exploration of oceans and continents with more big questions. We just talked about how oceans and continents are divided and named. Now let's dig deeper into how they shape our lives and our planet. Oceans are more than just giant water bodies. They are the reason life exists on Earth. Oceans regulate the Earth's climate by absorbing and releasing heat. Without them, our planet would be way too hot or way too cold. There are a source of food. They are a source of food providing fish, seaweed, and even salt. And don't forget they help us travel. Ships use oceans to transport goods and people all over the world. Did you know the ocean produces most of the oxygen we breathe? Tiny plants in the water called phytoplankton are like superheroes. They make about half of the world's oxygen. Let's give a big thank you to these tiny helpers. Now let's zoom in on the continents. They are pretty amazing too. Each continent is like its own storybook, full of unique places, animals and people. For example, Africa has the Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert on Earth. Asia has Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. And Antarctica is covered in ice, but it's also home to penguins and seals. Continents give us land to grow food, build homes and explore. They also have forests, rivers and mountains that keep us alive by providing fresh air and water. 
Together oceans and continents are like best friends. They work as a team to keep our planet balanced. The ocean cools us down and gives us oxygen while the land gives us space to live and grow. Look at this beautiful planet we call home. The oceans and continents may seem like separate parts but they are connected in every way. That's what makes Earth so special. Let's imagine we are holding a globe or looking at a picture of the Earth from, from far, far away, like from the moon. What color do you see the most? It's blue, is not it? Do you know why? That blue color shows us all the water on Earth. Water covers almost three-fourths of our planet's surface. That's a lot, right? Because of this, when astronauts first so earth from space they called it the blue planet now let's look closer at the globe can you spot another color you will see brown too this brown shows all the land on earth land takes up just over one fourth of the planet's surface if a piece of land is very big we call it a land mass and when that land is part of a very large continuous area we call it a continent the largest water bodies on the globe are called oceans and they are super important. Both, but both oceans and continents help make our weather and climate the way it is. They affect everything on earth, plants, animals and even people. We can see their effects not just in nature but also in how we live, the history of human life and even in our daily routines. So both water and land are special parts of our amazing planet. Here is something super interesting you don't want to miss. Did you know the Indian Navy has a beautiful emblem with a very special motto. It says Sam Naho Varunaha which means be auspicious to us O Varuna. Varuna is a Vedic deity who is closely connected to the oceans, the sky and water in general. This motto is like a prayer to Varuna, asking for safety and blessings over the seas. Is not that such a cool connection to India's ancient culture? Let's dig a little deeper. Did you know that water and land are not evenly spread out across the northern and southern hemisphere? It's true. Let's check it out. Take a look at these two maps. The blue areas represent water which includes oceans and these smaller extensions. You might know some of these extensions by names like sea, bay or gulf. Can you spot any differences between the two hemispheres? In the northern hemisphere there is much more land. The hemisphere contains large continents like North America, Europe and most of Asia. It's sometimes called the land hemisphere because land dominates here. Now look at the southern hemisphere. It's mostly covered by water with the vast Pacific, Atlantic and Indian oceans. That's why this hemisphere is often called the water hemisphere. The continents are here like Australia, parts of South America and Antarctica are much smaller in comparison. This unequal distribution of land and water has a big impact on Earth's climate. The northern hemispheres tends to have more extreme seasons because of its larger land area. Meanwhile, the southern hemisphere enjoys milder climates. It enjoys milder climates. So, thanks to all that water which helps regulate temperature. And let's not forget about those smaller water bodies. A sea is a smaller part of an ocean like the Arabian, Arabian Sea near India. A bay is a coastal water body like the Bay of Bengal. A bay is a place where the water from the ocean comes into the land like a big curved area. For example, the Bay of Bengal is a bay near India where the ocean water makes a big along the land. 
it's like a hook between water and land and a golf is like a larger bay such as the Persian Gulf a golf is like a bay but it's bigger and goes deeper into the land for example the Persian Gulf is a large gulf where the ocean water goes far into the land making a big area of water surrounded by land it's like a giant water pocket even these smaller extensions play a big role in shaping local weather and ecosystems so the way land and water are spread across the earth is not random it's part of what makes our planet so unique oceans dominate the southern hemisphere while continents take the lead in the north together they create a balanced system that supports life as we know it all right let's explore these two fascinating maps on the earth how do you notice about them? This map shows the earth divided into two parts, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. But wait, I see some interesting patterns here. Let's take a closer look. First, let's talk about these circular lines. Do you remember what these uh, lines are called? They are called parallels of latitudes. These lines run parallel to the equator and help us figure out how far north or south a place is and what about those lines radiating out from the poles these are called meridians of longitude they stretch from the north pole to the south pole and help us measure distance east or west is not it amazing how these lines make it easier to study our planet now let's compare the two hemispheres which one do you think has more water that's right the southern hemisphere has way more water in fact this hemisphere is mostly covered by oceans making it the water hemisphere it includes parts of the ocean pacific atlantic and indian oceans as well as the mighty southern ocean that surrounds antarctica on the other hand the northern hemisphere has more land with continents like north america europe and asia this makes it the land hemisphere but don't worry there are still plenty of water here too like the arctic ocean and parts of the pacific and Atlantic oceans so what's the water to land ratio in each hemisphere in the northern hemisphere about 60 percent is water and 40 percent is land in the southern hemisphere water covers about 80 percent while land makes up just 20 percent that's a huge difference right here is another fun fact. Are all the oceans connected or are they separate? Well, all the oceans on Earth are actually connected. Water flows between them through currents, making them part of an giant interconnected system called the global ocean. So even though we give them names like Pacific or Atlantic, it's really one big family of water bodies. So maps like this teach us so much about how our planet is organized now it's your turn look closely at these maps and discuss with your friends why do you think the southern hemisphere has more water and also discuss how do these differences affect life in each hemisphere so that's all for today thanks for exploring with me today don't forget to like share and subscribe for more awesome adventures see you next time Thank you.